In last lesson, we looked at the Bible. Um, now, in this one, we're going to look at salvation. Now, like we said at the beginning of the class, at this point, we kind of already expect that you are, in fact, uh, saved, that you are a Christian. Um, but sometimes, um, as we are saved longer, we just kind of overcomplicate things, and we kind of think, okay, so I was saved, but now I have to prove myself to God to prove that I'm worth being saved or something. Um, but the truth is that everything from the grace leading up to salvation, salvation itself, and our life as a Christian is all by God's mercy. Not, oh, well, okay, he, he saved me by his mercy and his grace, but now I'm, now I'm earning my salvation. It's like it doesn't work like that. So let's look at that. Why do we need to be saved? Biggest reason, because people are guilty before God, and we have a sinful nature. <clears throat> so there's, there's actually two, two parts there. First off, we are guilty. We have all sinned. And even the smallest offense separates us from God. Because anything less than God's absolute perfection is sin. Well, that's not looking too good for us. <laughs> but then there's another set. See, we have a sinful nature. That means we're born in sin. We don't have to teach our kids to lie to us. They will eventually do that all by themselves. Um, you know, we're not born as a blank slate. We are born in sin. Um, so the first uh, fill in the blank there, because people are guilty before God. The word is guilty. So in Romans 5.12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And then he goes on in 13. Um, well, I'm not going to read that, actually. We'll go ahead and stop there. Then in Ephesians ch uh, chapter 2, verse 3, It says, Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of the flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. And then uh, next off, why do we need to be saved? Because sin is any failure to conform to the moral law of God in act, attitude, or nature. And last time I checked, we by our very nature, what makes us us, fail to conform to God. <laughs> it's just we're not him. We don't even think like he thinks. He's his thought processes are perfect. Whereas we, you know, get sometimes to the good right outcome through these thought processes God doesn't. So Romans uh, chapter 3 verse 23 says um, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then uh, there's no blink on that one. But then the third one on that point is the result of sin is punishment and separation from God. So uh, on your fill in the blank there, it's the result of sin is punishment and separation from God. Um, anytime that we sin, it makes us um, separated from God. And only the sacrifice of Christ can, can, get it, can do that, anything about that. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we need to be saved because we just we just ain't good. Um, I think that it's very obvious by any um, genuine study that someone does that humanity is basically evil. I mean, we may do good things. Like, I'm sure we've all had a nice, loving, caring grandma, for instance. Uh, but our works don't make us worthy of God. It, we we have sin. Like, let's say, for instance, there's a murderer, okay? And they kill your child. And then when they're done killing them, they say, you know what? I think I'm going to start start being nice to people. But you killed my child. See, I mean, there, there, there still is that sin that needs to be answered for. So how are we saved? Um, Christ died in our place, covering the sins of those who accept. All you have to do is accept. That's it. There's no complicated process here. Chat Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 9 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, a uh, really, um, uh, really important verse, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith trusting in God, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, 
not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are not saved by doing good things. We're saved by faith. And our faith, God, excuse me, God gives us the ability to have faith. And the more we trust God, the more faith God gives us. We accept by turning from sin. We, we accept salvation by turning from sin. Stop, stop sinning and trusting in Christ daily. So the fill in the blank there on the sheet is daily. In James chapter one, verse two through three, it says, "Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance." And then Hebrews 11.1. 1. That process of, accept, of, of believing. Hebrews 11.1. 1. <clears throat> now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For if it's seen, it's not really faith. And then the next point there, although we are saved, salvation is a ongoing process which ends at death never forget that it is a relationship a matter of the heart salvation is having a relationship with jesus christ it's having a good heart it's not doing all the things it's not having a bunch of good traditions it's not observing christmas and easter it's not you know going to church it's not dressing nice it's not doing everything perfect it's having a relationship with jesus christ and jesus is our mediator he was the perfect one it's not about our perfection it's his so then why do we stop sinning? Because we are obeying God. <laughs> and also because the Holy Spirit convicts us of that and he changes us and he wants us to stop sinning. Just because we're saved doesn't mean that that's a, a, a get out of jail free card that we can just go on and sin. So, um, so we are saved now. However, God is continually saving us and then will, this, will, this will end when we die and we, we go into heaven. <clears throat> so... Uh, the blank there, oh, there is no blank on that one. No, 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 there is. Although we are saved, salvation is an ongoing, the word is ongoing process. Um, okay, and in Romans 8, 24, well, let, let's read the Hebrews 10, 23 one first. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification with which no one will see the Lord. So try try and get along with people, all right, all right? And the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. The only way to salvation. Romans 8.24. Even Mother Teresa, who I think everyone would agree was a fantastic person, um pointed to the fact that she needed Christ. So I think that we're probably not as good as Mother Teresa, and then if she thought that she needed salvation, well, I think that maybe we kind of do too. Uh, Romans 8, 24 through 25 says, For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. So, um, <clears throat> this is a chart, okay? Before we are saved, we are slaves to sin. Okay? We are not saved. But then when we get saved, boop, that pops us into this tier here. We are growing in holiness, but we're saved. Anything below this line is not saved. Anything above it is saved. That moment of our surrendering to Christ, Jesus, I accept you. Please forgive me. Um, you know, that, that moment of, of accepting Christ uh, at death is what launches us into this tier. And then we do good things, and it pleases God, but it doesn't make us any more or less saved. See, like, let's say we have a little bit of a... Uh, we get we start doing drugs again, or we start sleeping around again, or whatever, and we start sinning again, and if we choose, we will go back... We, we can abandon Christ. But here's the thing. Losing your salvation is... Well, I'll talk about it in a minute. Um... I'll hold on to your hats for that bit. But basically, the, the the good things we do don't make us more worthy. They just are good things. Oops. And then when we die, boop, perfect holiness right here. Our character will change. We'll get a new body. Um, so how are we saved? That's, that's, that's a good question. 
Repent means to turn from. Trust means a moment by mo is a moment by moment choice. Okay, you can't say I trust in God. It's are you trusting in God? Now, so how are you saved? You repent from sin and you trust in Christ. Repent from sin, Lord. I'm sorry for doing this. You try to stop doing that. Now you're gonna fail, and you keep you keep trying, you keep going, and God will give you more and more opportunities, and eventually you'll get victory over things, little bit by little bit. But don't 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 be uh, uh, what's the word impatient about it. Um, and then you trust in Christ because either you're living for yourself or you're living for God. So repenting from sin is it's it's a process. You you can't do both. You can't repent from sin and not trust in Christ. So. You repent from sin and trust in Christ, two connected events. And trusting in Christ means, right now, Lord, I'm trusting for you to get me through this. I'm trusting that I'm saved, even though I don't see salvation. I'm trusting that, that you love me like your word says. Um, so this is how it goes. There's fact. Jesus died for us, which leads to our faith. I, you know, I, I trust that his sacrifice is good enough to present me before before God and feeling because I have faith in what is reality Jesus Christ did die he was raised from the dead um, now now I have feelings see what I mean and what I mean by that is now I feel something Lord I am moved by you but what we try to do we kind of try to jumble things around I have I feel that God isn't real or I feel that um, that I'm not good enough, or I feel that, you know, fill in the blank. Therefore, I have faith in my feeling, and that overrides any fact. But the truth is fact overrides feeling. So, uh, remember to keep that in proper perspective there. What if I keep on sinning? A very good question. First off, confess your wrongdoing to God and seek him. That sounds like a good good plan. Uh, Romans 8.13 says, uh, For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death, putting to death, not have put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. If I can get there. Come on. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have, um, I'm sorry, I missed the wrong one. Sorry, Matthew 16, 14 through 26. Oof, sorry about that. Man, it took me forever to get there, and I didn't even turn to the right place. Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 14, going through 26. I'm not going to read all of it, though. Um, and they said, some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, because uh, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This so then hop on down. Um, from, the t from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and, and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not seeing your mind, setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And read on through verse 26. For whoever wishes to save this life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I once heard Billy Graham say that what that means is that you, your salvation, is worth the whole world. I like that. So, okay. Um, confess your wrongdoing and keep seeking him. Okay. Uh, believe he will forgive you. Sin remains but no longer reigns. See, we, we still mess up. But it no longer reigns over us because Christ says, okay, I am covering you. My goodness, I am putting over you. So that when the Christ, when God, when the Father looks at you, he will see my blood instead of your failure. So he takes that history of our failures, that what makes us us, whatever our past is, and he gives us a new name and gives us a future. He adopts us as children. 
sinning is different than living in sin. Okay? So in the blank there, living, living in sin. Sin is different than living in sin. First Corinthians, um, sinning, I'm sorry, sinning is different than living in sin. First Corinthians uh, 15, starting in verse 31. I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. It's a process. It is a process. So don't forget that. Romans chapter 7. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Verse 19 says, For the good for the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. See that that struggle between being saved and just Sometimes not really acting like it. I'm sure you've, I mean, no matter how long you've been saved, there's times when you just don't really act like a Christian. I know I do, and uh, I know I'm a person, so I know you do too. <laughs> for if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. See, the difference is whether you openly embrace sin and live in sin versus if you sin. See, one is, okay, let me give you an example. I'm seeking after God, I desire him, but then, eesh, I looked at porn. And I know that God doesn't want me to do that, but I messed up. So I get up and I say, Lord, please forgive me. And I, and I go, and I keep seeking after him. Lord, please, please forgive me. Help me to have your des the desires that you want. Okay? Now, translate that to this. Um, okay, I'm a Christian, I'm married. But I've decided to cheat on my wife, and I'm going to keep on cheating. See the difference there between living in sin and sinning. Um, so that kind of leads us to an idea here, and I'll, I'll come back to this about losing salvation, and we'll get back to that at the end. So let's just keep going. Um, don't give up, but don't pretend it didn't happen. See, when we go through something and we mess up, we think, oh, I'm no good. I'll just better off you know just quitting don't give up but then sometimes we go to the other extreme and we say you know what i'm just going to ignore it well you can't pretend it didn't happen either you have to take it to god and ask for forgiveness and confess your sin to god see we don't confess our sin to priests we confess our sins to god now it does say about confessing your sins to one another um that is very much so context driven, but I will say this. Let's say, for instance, I, I cheat, I, I cheated someone. I, I should go to them and, and, and confess and make it right. But let's say, for instance, I lusted after someone. I shouldn't go to them. I should take that to the Father. Um, you don't want to be admitting um, uh, sexual tension towards somebody. It's just a bad idea. It's just a, a bad, bad idea. Um, so, okay, that takes us to this. We will sin on purpose. That doesn't mean that every time that you sin on purpose, you lose your salvation. Well, I'll get back to that in just a minute, okay? Um, so then we seek God by fasting. We seek God by prayer and by worshiping, by studying his word, by focusing our attention and thoughts on him, by living a life that is honoring to him. That is worship. So um, depend on him. Don't focus on the sin. When you sin, you know, sometimes we just focus the crap out of that sin. Oh, look at how I messed up. But you don't get... You don't get... Um, forgiveness by really beating yourself down. Here, let me beat myself with a whip. You take it to the Father and say, look, God, I did this. Please forgive me. I am guilty. It's nobody else's fault. It's my fault. Please forgive me. And here's the thing. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. It is a, It is. It is very much so a process. First off, we need God. Yeah, obviously, we can't be saved by ourselves, but also, we need the body. It, we help each other. So, um, do we have to earn salvation through good deeds? Oh, I, I, I did not tell you the, the fill in the blanks. I am sorry. Let me go back to that. Um, so sinning is different than living in sin. Okay. And then in the next one, we seek God by fasting, prayer, worshiping. So the fill in the blank there is prayer. Um, okay. So in Philippians... Chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. 
So, do we have to earn salvation through good deeds? Salvation is only through Christ. Obedience and good deeds are the result of following Christ. Okay? So, you're filling the blank there. Salvation is only through Christ. Good deeds are the result. They're the result. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. <coughs> and without faith, <coughs> it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Good deeds can never save us. Never, never, ever, ever, never. Okay, so James chapter 2, verse uh, 14 through 18. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and in one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But whoever, um, but someone may well say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. See, faith produces works. But works do not produce salvation. Okay. Now I will say this: the more um, you obey God and do good works, the more it will um, help you to have stronger faith. But that works do not save us. Um, so works, good works, doing good things, are about obeying and trusting, not salvation. So the fill in the blank there is trusting, not salvation. Romans eight twelve. Let me see here. Eight, twelve. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Um, and then 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. If you're living God's way, if you're allowing him to guide you, that is the sign of Christian growth. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So keep these things in mind. Um, and remember, the word was meant to be studied. So, In Exodus, God led the people out of Egypt. Okay, They were slaves, and he led them out. They could not be any more out of Egypt than they were. That's how salvation works. God saved you. You can't be any more saved than you are. In the same way a person is either saved or not saved. There's two kinds of people in the world. There's those who are saved and those who are not saved. That's it. There's not white, black, rich, poor. It doesn't matter. We are either saved or we're not saved. So then that kind of brings up the question a lot of times, why do I doubt? And here's the thing. God doesn't God doesn't judge us for, for times of doubt. Okay, As long as the doubt is something that you feel or sometimes passing thoughts. If doubt is put into action, that's when God starts to judge us, okay? Because, okay, so I doubt God. You know, I'm in a time of just not really, I don't know, just I'm not really getting at God. I, I don't really feel like I'm on the same page with you. Versus, um, I'm going to go out of my way to, uh, you know, spite the pastor and you know destroy the church and see what i mean actions of doubt versus struggling struggling god's not going to punish you for or, you know um so so here's are some common causes of doubting the first is not forgiving not forgiving a past offender so the fill in the blank there is forgiving um in matthew chapter 6 Verse 12. And here's the thing about this one. It's a very easy fix. Ask for forgiveness. See, we think is, I, I don't need to ask for forgiveness. They wronged me. And then you became bitter. And that you do need to ask for forgiveness for. If you have not forgiven someone who, who hurt your feelings, you need to forgive them and move on. Um, I see very frequently people who uh, have not forgiven their parents, 
Um, you know, they didn't have perfect parents. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> I'm not a perfect parent either. And so then they decided to hold that against their parent instead of doing what God said about forgiving and honoring your mother and father. Nope, I've just decided not to listen to that part. Well, this is going to cause you to doubt because you've decided to live your own way rather than God's way. Uh, Matthew 6, 12 says, um, And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. If we don't forgive other people, God will not forgive us. So remember that. Um, not resolving a past conflict. The, the film of blank there is conflict. Do everything you can to pursue peace. Chase after peace. Do everything possible. In Matthew 5, verse 23 through 24, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. It doesn't say who was wronged, just that somebody has something against you. Leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Resolve conflict. If you just leave conflicts, it's going to strain on your mind. You have to pursue peace. You have to be a peacemaker. What does that mean? You're going into a situation where there is no peace and you are helping to make peace. But I really don't like them. Well, you need to get over that. Um, another reason that we can have doubt is holding on to a sin. The film of there is holding. Um, and for that, it's, I mean, the only option is to give it up. Yeah. If you are holding on to something that you know is wrong and God's been dealing with you about it, you need, you need to let it go. Hebrews 3.13 says, and remember, you know, God sees this all the time. He sees things that you're doing wrong right now that you don't even realize that you're doing wrong. And see how patient and merciful he's being towards you. Remember that next time that you're dealing with your kids, next time you're dealing with people who irritate you. Just remember that. Remember how patient God has been in dealing with you. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's just, that's just good. Um, another reason we doubt is demanding answers. God has to answer every single one of my curiosities right now. God doesn't do that. And we're going to have questions about stuff. You know, God, why did you do this? Why did this happen? Why did the Bible say this? Why... Why was I born with this problem? Why did this happen? I don't know. And you probably won't know this side of eternity either. Um, but I can guarantee you this. When you get to heaven, it won't matter. I know people say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God this. No, you won't. It's not going to matter. Um, our ways do not produce God's results. The fill in the blank there is results. We can't live our own way and expect for God's will to be accomplished. So keep seeking him and faith will come. Some, sometimes we go through times of doubt, not understanding, you know, maybe feeling distant from God, whatever. If you keep seeking him, faith will come and he will answer you. He leads us through these dry spells as one of many ways of getting us to grow and seek him more. Um, oftentimes if we're in too good of situations, we just kind of forget where we came from and uh, we get real prideful. So uh, Mark 9, 24, for instance, says this, you know, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. It's not like I either believe or either do not believe. There's always this tug of war in us uh, between, you know, belief and disbelief. And uh, it's okay to struggle. It really it is. So how do I know I'm saved? What, are there like some kind of signs? Yes, actually there are. First off, inner peace. This, this can come and go depending on when God is working in us, where our focus is, if we're going undergoing trials, all kinds of stuff. So this really isn't the best factor, but still a lot of times there will still be kind of this inner peace where we'll know I am saved. You know, we'll just, we might not sleep good and we might be going through stuff, but there's just something inside of us that we know, okay, yeah, this crappy thing is going on, but I know somewhere back here that, that I'm saved. Oh, but do I know? And, you know, we kind of overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah, I do. So Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. God's Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So uh, besides that, um, current pursuit of God. Are you actively seeking him now? Are you actively obeying him now? Keep going. You know, uh, it's... <coughs> Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you are seeking God right now, you just have to rest in knowing that he is uh, doing a work. And that has to be good enough. Uh, Matthew 
10.22 says, For you will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. And then in John 8, it's not about you know everything being perfect. It's it's about trusting in God. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32 says, So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Okay? So, um, there are no fill-in-the-blanks there, I don't think. Okay, yeah, corruption of God. Um, you are either actively moving forward or moving backwards. There's no such thing as plateauing. There's no such thing as settling. Um, I know it feels like, oh, I'm kind of hanging out here. That's because it takes a while for the results to, to catch up with you. But you are either seeking God or you are not seeking God. And so you have to look back and you have to genuinely say, analyze yourself. Hey, am I am I doing what God has wants of me to do? Am I, am I really seeking him or am I seeking my own desires? Who, am I living my life on my terms or on his? Um, oops, I sorry, I went the wrong way there. Um, there's also an inner desire to obey God and conviction. Conviction is a film, a film of blank at disobedience. Um, you just know that what you're doing is wrong, and there's just something inside of you that, that wants to do the right thing. And here's the thing the more you seek God, the more you will want to read the Bible and pray. If you don't have a desire to read the Bible and pray, it's because you're not seeking God. Um, so we kind of try to super spiritualize this. Oh, no, I see God. You know, I listen to worship music. Well, it's not really seeking God. Uh, <laughs> this grows with time and perseverance as you seek. And here's the thing. People who are not saved, they don't get this. They don't understand these things. But for those of us who do believe, we experience God in these little ways, and it's just crazy. Um, one of the things I did is that I read the Bible every single day and prayed for, for two years, and then I took six months where I didn't, and just to see if it would have any effect on me, and it did. My panic attacks were worse, my depression was worse, I felt like I didn't have purpose, I just felt real restless in my spirit. Um, the spirit is kind of like the body. If we don't exercise it, we just have all this built-up energy, and, ah, you know, so you can't really feel content if you're not uh, seeking God, because God feels something there that we're not able to quench. Um, so life, your spiritual walk, work, struggles, etc. are easier if you are not on drugs or alcohol. This just goes for anything. Um, I know it's hard, but I believe you can do it. Remember to get help. Um, I think that there will be drug addicts in heaven. And I think that there will be alcoholics in heaven. But I think that God loves us too much to just leave us there in our misery. Um, I know that when we're on drugs and alcohol and those kinds of things, even pornography, any kind of addictive anything, the way we think kind of gets a little bit skewed. See, our worldview is already messed up, but then we get into addictive things, and it really messes it up. So then once we get off of addictive things, we're, we're back to this the worldly standard of normal, but still, that's kind of screwed up. So we have to seek God to get to, for him to give us a new worldview, a higher worldview. And then we start seeing stuff differently. And, uh, you know, if you're having stuff like suicidal thoughts and stuff, this is ex exactly what I'm talking about, evidence. Of, of needing God to touch your, your, your thinking. So, um, get help. Can I lose my salvation? This is the part that I was uh, mentioning. Um, but before I do that, let me go to Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I, I mentioned the fill in the blank, but I didn't actually read the verse. Romans 8, 14 says... For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And I just I just read this before, but just remember that. All who are being led. Okay. So, um, can I lose my salvation? Well, it's a, it's a yes and a no. No, but you can give it away. What do I mean by that? Well, it's not like you're going to mess up one day and, whoops, I lost my salvation. Slipped, I slipped out of God's hands. No. But that also doesn't mean that I'm once saved, always saved. You can be saved and leave the faith. But here's the thing. When you give up your salvation, it's it's a it's a choice. It's something where you're living your own way and God's dealing with you and you continually live your own way and continually live your own way. And then you get harder and harder and harder until finally you leave God. So um, just something to keep in mind. You can give it away. 
Disobedience produces disbelief. The fill in the blank there is disbelief. Disobedience produces disbelief. You cannot live your own way and have strong faith. It just won't work. It's just not going to work. Hebrews, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 26 to 27 says, For if we go on sinning willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of the fire which will consume the adversaries. It doesn't say that we can never come back. That's something that people kind of just insert there. Um, but, so if you are living in sin, you will eventually reach a place of dis disobedience. Oh, no, I'll never do that. Yeah, yeah, you will, because you can only have one master, and eventually one of them is going to win. So if you are living in disobedience, repent and call on the name of the Lord today. Don't wait. I mean, you're miserable, and why see how close you can get to complete and utter destruction before you turn back? It just doesn't make sense. Um, sometimes we do it by pride. And what Pastor says a lot of times is he says the same pride that takes us into sin will keep us from getting out of it. And I think that's absolutely true. So just remember that. Don't be, don't be prideful. God already knows what's in your heart. He already knows how you got there. He already saw everything. Just come clean, confess your sin to God, ask for forgiveness, and start seeking Him again. I mean, honestly, God, God is, God is very patient. He, He will forgive you if you turn. So, if you are living in disobedience, repent and call on the name of the Lord today. Absolutely. Um, Hebrews three seven through eight actually says, "Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as when they provoked me, as in the days of trial in the wilderness." So, uh, today, if you hear His voice. We can still repent if we are breathing. There's always there's always time. If, if you're alive, I mean, do it now. You might think, oh, I'm too bad, or I've messed up too many times. God is good, and his salvation isn't based on your goodness, so don't worry about it. Just repent, turn away from sin, seek God. So when should I accept? First off, do not accept lightly. This is a lifestyle change. Either you do or do not serve God. And he makes that absolutely clear. You know, it count the cost before you follow after me, because the person who looks back, they they're not worthy. So remember that. Think about this. And I'm not trying to over to, to to make you feel bad. I'm really not. But there's a certain element of we need to take into account what we're doing here. We are making the biggest decision of our life, and you shouldn't make it life lightly. You should genuinely think about this, and you should. Do with what you with what um, with what is right. I genuinely hope that you choose to be saved, but at the end of the day, I can't make that decision for you, and I can't make uh, I can't make you obey God. Luke chapter fourteen, so in verse twenty five through thirty five. I'm not going to read that many verses, but um, it's he's talking here in, in verse twenty five. Now large crowds were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Some strong things he says here, and then and there in verse thirty five, it is useless. I'm sorry, in verse thirty four, therefore salt is good, but if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? It is useless either for the soil or for the manure, manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Really, just a great, a great passage there. Um, in verse 31 is another really, really strong part of, of this whole passage. What king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the one coming against him with 20,000? And he's talking there about how you want to weigh it before you become Christ's disciple. Um, it's not a light decision. If you desire salvation... Now is the time. The, the fill in the blank there is now. Don't wait till it's too late. We fool ourselves into thinking we'll always have it tomorrow. I'll, I'll turn from sin later. It Sin is very tricky, and it just really eats us and leaves nothing less left. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience, he again fixes a certain day, today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as has been said before, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Do not harden your heart. And then in verse Romans 10, 13. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved.
We do not have a list of important things with God as number one. We make everything in our lives revolve around God. Now, it's not, you know, oh, well, I need to give this much time to work and this much time to family, this much time to God. It's my life is God's. And everything else has to just fit with that. And what I mean by that is you have to live your life to honor God. God should be getting in all the realms of your life, how you work, how how you live, your your home and family life. It shouldn't just be out. He shouldn't just be, um, what is it called, uh, relocated for Sunday. That, 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 that shouldn't be the factor. We shouldn't be one-day Christians. We should be a lifestyle. So... Um, Animals, angels, and things cannot receive salvation. Only humans can. Um, when we die, we do not become angels. Um, we go to heaven, and we will be given a, a, a resurrected body in the future. Um, uh, deciding to follow Christ is the greatest decision you will ever make. It has eternal uh, consequence. Absolutely. Life does not become perfect or struggle-free. The film of Brent Blank there is perfect. Life does not become perfect or struggle-free. Does buying an umbrella make it not rain? <laughs> no. Simply buying sunglasses does nothing. You must wear them. Focus on God. So uh, there's a few different things I'm saying here. First off, life, life does not become perfect or struggle-free. You will still have problems, and oftentimes it will be getting worse. Um, I, there was a musician uh, who actually came from Jewish background, and when he got saved, um, he was despised by his family because he believed in, in Christ and left the Jewish um, way of life. Um, so it's just like when it, when it rains, you may have an umbrella, but it is still going to rain. Okay. Um, simply buying sunglasses and stuff. Okay. So what I'm saying here is, when when you're in going through life. It's not good enough to say, oh, I'm a Christian, so then, therefore, whenever I go through hard times, things are just going to be better. When you go through hard times, you have to put on the sunglasses. You have to seek God. Simply buying sunglasses does nothing. You wear them. Focus on God. You seek in, uh, after God, and when you're going through those struggles, he will give you peace in those struggles as you seek him. So if there are any questions, once again, post them below. Um, I hope that this has helped you understand salvation a little bit more and maybe deterred you from trying to impress God with your goodness. Um, the next lesson will be about more about God, and we're going to get more into um, things that more apply to you, day-by-day day -day stuff like finances and stuff.